What up players, it's Wall Boss Tay up in this mug and today we're doing a Fluff Hunters video for the Orcs in Warhammer 40k and this is going to be very general I'm going to show you some examples of of the different Orc clans and talk a little bit about them uh, but I'm going to probably do some more specific videos for the different Orc clans later I just wanted to do an overview of the Orcs in Warhammer 40k what makes them what they are and the awesomeness that they are and this is a video appreciation video for one of the big contributors to last year's July painting challenge and I say big because this man tackled an orc stampa and his goal to build and paint it up by the end of the month truly truly inspiring for anybody who has not seen this project it is Mega Tim Ho and he not only did the part uh, contributed and took part in the challenge he answered all the questions that all the tertiary objective videos it was just really inspiring to follow his work so thank you mega tim ho this video is for you my friend the orcs now the orcs are big and green and ma mean and nasty they love to fight uh, and by the way i'm getting all this information from the warhammer 40k wikia as well as Lexicanum. And just a really quick overview of them. They were created, according to the 40k fluff in this universe, by a race of reptilian creatures known as the Old Ones. Not to be confused with the Old Ones from Warhammer Fantasy, or are they? I don't know. Um, but they were mainly created as a race to fight off the Necrons and their Satan masters in the great interstellar conflict called the War in Heaven and this was over 60 million Terran years ago and uh, This was way way before even the rise of the Eldar So this is way at the beginning of time They created the orcs to be muscular aggressive and not very smart in order to serve as their soldiers Their technology is maintained by a cast of what they call odd boys or the ones that kind of take care of all of their stuff like the mech boys etc and uh, the skill is an unconscious one, preserved through genetic memories hardwired into the Odd Boys DNA by the Brain Boys millions of years ago. So the Odd Boys don't know how they know how to fix everything. Like the Mech Boys don't know how they know it. They don't go to Mech Boy school. They just learn it because it's encoded in their DNA. They individually lack psychic power, but they have a collaborative collective psychic ability, meaning that if enough orcs believe something to be true, then it will actually become so, brought into power by their gestalt psychic ability. For example, orc rockets painted yellow create bigger explosions simply because the vast majority of orcs think that they do. Vehicles that are painted red will go faster than other vehicles simply because the vast majority of orcs think they do. They don't know why, it just happens. And that's also why a lot of their tech, like their guns, their their vehicles, um, they won't work. But when an orc will start to use it, it'll work because he believes it works. If a human tried to get behind an orc truck, uh, the wheel of an orc truck, and tried to figure out how to make it work, there's there's no way. Like a tech tech priest or an engine seer would take apart an orc shooter or slugger trying to figure out how these orcs made it and he won't be able to figure out how it works because it just it doesn't make any sense to anybody else it just works because they believe it other casts besides the mech boys include pain boys or their docs who heal and i think there should be quotes around this orcs wounded in battle and run herds later renamed slavers who direct the efforts of the small goblin like orcoids called gretchen uh, you also have other specialized casts such as digger boys and brewers However, the Imperium currently possesses no information on them other than their bare existence. It may be assumed that when the orcs go to war, these casts fight as an ordinary mob of shooter armed boys. And that's cool for conversion people because you can make a digger boy or a brewer's a brewer boy uh, and convert him up but just make him a regular shooter. Shooter. The orc language has no word for diplomacy. They solve almost all of their disputes by fighting. Indeed, many intelligent races believe that violence itself is a language amongst the orcs, since they use pain and brutality to get their points across to each other. Orcs are not very intelligent or clever, and they even label the use of strategy and fleeing from battle as unorky. Looking at the lexicanum now, it talks a little bit about how the orc physiology is a mixture of animal and fungus, integrated such that each augments the operation of the other, and both work in perfect harmony. The fungus makes the individual orcs incredibly resilient, replacing several vital organs as well as adding padding around those that remain. 
And the fungus is also how we explain the orc's reproductive function and makes them one of the most proliferative species in the galaxy. Basically what happens is that once an orc becomes an adult, they're constantly releasing spores which go and seep into the ground and lay there dormant for years waiting to develop into orcs or Gretchen. Thus, a world invaded by orcs will be troubled by them for hundreds of years to come even if they think their initial attack is defeated. And it is all but impossible to eradicate them completely because they will grow in the wilderness and in the far-off, non-reachable areas, and they will germinate, and they will burst into orcs, and orcs will come out, Wah! and they'll start destroying things and spreading more spores. And so the humans or the Eldar or whatever race will be like, orcs, kill them! And they get rid of all the orcs that are there. Maybe they'll even burn the bodies to get rid of the spores on the adult orcs. But, of course, the orcs, before they were killed, were spreading spores and and germinating the land and, and just spreading their, their orky fungus all around. So that's why you can never really get rid of the orcs. And both sites make mention that if the orcs were to ever band together, then they would crush everything else in the universe, which is kind of what the 40k people at GW say about everything. If they were to team up and unite, then they could destroy everything and rule the galaxy. But orcs, in this case, could be it could be true because of all the planets they visit you know they're just like a bird with pollen on its wings they see that planet and they move on or they overpopulate and they just spread like like crazy and you've got a society they've got a society of orcs they've got a bunch of different clans um, not only do they have the main clans but in 40k basically in 40k you choose an army right like the orcs say you decide you want to play orcs because they're fun and wacky and you like the models so mainly what normal people do, <laughs> normal, you don't have to do this, is you'll choose one clan and you'll paint all your guys up as boys from that clan. And then you'll have some different uh, special characters like Free Buddhas, which are kind of like orc pirates, uh, the Cult of Speed, which is mainly orcs on vehicles, and feral orcs, or I guess, uh, you know, primitive orcs, basically. And you'll paint all your guys up in that in in that paint style to stay cohesive. Um, when an orc warband gets big enough, then they will create a war, and that's kind of like a, a mass unification of various tribes and warbands all fighting to uh, to fight. Fortunately, these wars are not permanent alliances. Will eventually disband either when they are defeated. Or when they run out of enemies to fight. Orcs live to fight. They don't care about ruling the galaxy or subjugating another race. Or, or they don't have any big goals per se. They live to fight and to, to get to the bigger fight. To get into the biggest fight as possible. And the funny thing about the orc physiology and the orc brain is that the fungus in their bodies kind of go into overdrive. The, 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 the more aggressive, the more successful an orc is. So uh, an orc that just popped out of a mushroom, will be kind of weedy. He'll still be big and muscular and strong, but um, once he starts getting into fights and beating other opponents and starts to think, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm a good fighter. Man, I should go out and find more fights. He'll go into other fights and he'll beat, a next, beat up the next guy and um, get even more status and other orcs will start to respect him. He'll feel so good about himself that the fungus spores in his body will start to go into you know, overdrive and they'll start to bump, to pump him up and make him even bigger. And that's why the bigger or the more successful an orc is at war, the bigger he'll get. And uh, you, here we go, you start off as a boy, there's all these different types of boys, but you're basically just uh, one out of, you know, millions. And then the, the, the more fights you, you get into, the, the more scraps you get, you become a ruling class, larger and more aggressive, and they act as squad leaders or fight together in their own mobs. And um, and then eventually they get so big, so successful, so strong and um, successful, like I said, that he will become a warlord or a war boss. Like me! And yeah, that's that's how it works. They've got a religion. The religion is very simple. They believe in two, two gods, Gork and Mork. Gork is the god of cunning brutality and Mork the god of brutal cunning. You see how that is? The subtle difference between uh, being that Mork hits you when you aren't looking, Gork hits you where 
uh, hard where you are. As such, the orcs can't remember which is which, and they fight over it. They don't have a real priesthood, although the infamous mighty goth warlord Gazgul Mag Urukthraka claims to be receiving visions visions from them. I love Gork and Mork. Gork and Mork are hilarious because um, they're just two orc gods that just fight all the time, and um, and and they talk about fighting smart or or smart fighting, and they complement each other and. They remind me of like soccer hooligans in Europe that just go around into bars starting fights and <laughs> just for no other reason than to start a fight. Another little piece of trivia, Gazgul's name play on who? Margaret Thatcher. Mag Eric Draka. <laughs> oh, so dumb. All right, currency, teeth. They use teeth or teeth as currency. The more teeth you knock out of uh, another orc's head, the more uh, rich and wealthy you are. Luckily, teeth, their teeth grow back a lot. So you knock an orc's teeth out, it'll grow back and uh, replace them quite frequently. They degrade over time, so it's impossible to hoard them. You gotta spend them as soon as you get them. And this keeps the prices constant, ensuring that all orcs have access to money and allows constant values to be placed on commodities. Isn't that weird? Isn't that a weird way to look at their economy? Is that um, each orc has the ability to be rich because their their wealth is in their teeth. They just don't think about that. They just want to fight. A tooth will buy a good squig pie and a tankard of fungus beer. Mm -mm. While a bag of teeth will buy a cheap war buggy. A big flash wa battle wagon could cost the war boss hundreds of teeth. Orcs have a language. Their own language is very crude and has many dialects varying across the galaxy. Often it incorporates loan words from other languages including Imperial Gothic. Writing is beyond the abilities of most greenskins, but they do use a limited range of pictograms and glyphs for, among other things, drawing crude maps, which is why you'll see glyphs on most vehicles, and sometimes even most um, boys have tattoos of certain glyphs, like uh, the teeth is a prominent one here, like the lower jaw teeth, or um, sharp claw-like extensions, and arrows. They're very, very, very crude, but still very fun. Uh, the, the, the thing I like about their language is when um, they pu are put into various media, the orcs are always, they always sound like gruff, uh, what's, what's the word, east end, low, lower end, uh, uh, I don't want to say cockney, but, but they have this kind of lower guttural and uh, very non, you know, non-enunciated kind of speech. Are you me? Get over here, it's your orcish smash here. And I love it. I love the way they sound. It's really fun. Okay, there we talked a little bit about technology. Orcs in the galaxy. There's this map about where they are. And you've got some notable orcs. So, like I said, you've got six orc clans, major clans. We're going to look over each one, and then we'll wrap up this video. You've got the Goths, which are the main orc clan. Back when I started playing Warhammer when I was a little kid, they... Uh, I don't even remember what it was called. They they had a set which was like the Assault on Black Reach or Dark Vengeance, but it was only Space Marines and Orcs, and they were pretty much just one piece stuck into a base, slotted into a base, and then you you pop their arm in. It was like a little snap fit, and you get a bunch of these guys, and they look so silly and ridiculous and cheap. And over time, they changed the aesthetic of the Orcs so that they weren't the heads weren't as round per se, and they weren't as hunched over. And they're still kind of a little bit hunched over, but just the ability to add more detail made them look a little bit different now. Like, if you notice in these second edition sculpts, their faces very much look like a toad's with the lower lower lip, the lower jaw, very smooth upper lip. And uh, now they're able to make them, give them all sorts of these crazy, um, crazy expressions. But the goths were, you know, what what a lot of the older gamers out there think of these second edition holding an axe in one hand and a slug in the other and there's mono pose you can't pose them at all and um, goths their main characteristic is that they use this bull head as a symbol and their main color is black black and white checks a lot of people think goth is supposed to stand for like goth like uh like those those kids at, in high school who sit around and smoke cigarettes and talk about how hard their life is but i think it's just I think it's goth is just means goth, and it's black and white checks, and there's no 
inherent uh, links. But another thing that people like about these Goths, and this is from a Forge World bo art book, so that's kind of what you would think of as the standard color scheme. A, a while back in the late 80s, early 90s, I'm not sure, some, some of you out there who have better uh, time uh, memories on, on this will, will know better than I. The Games Workshop released these three guys, the Goth Rockas, and they're orcs with electric guitars, mohawk, slash top hat, so awesome, so awesome. Alright, so the Goth's main characteristic, if you're thinking of starting an orc army and you're thinking, is a Goth warband good for me, is that they like they're the most warlike. They love to fight more than any other clan. That's their their single overriding thought is, where's the next fight? Where's the next fight? Let's get into a fight. The Bad Moons, their overriding quality, besides being yellow, having yellow as a paint scheme, is that they are the, ri the richest, the wealthiest. They've got a lot of teeth. And we can talk more about that when I do their Fluff Hunter video. But they use their teeth to buy lots of ostentatious, brightly colored... Uh, the best war gear and equipment and vehicles the Teeth can buy. Their symbol is a evil-looking crescent moon, and their color is yellow. Evil Suns! The Evil Suns, their main color is red, and their, um, their overriding characteristic, their quality that, that sets them apart from other orcs, is that they love to go fast. So they'll have lots of motorcycles and motorbikes and death copters and whatever the heck this is, and trucks, 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 trucks to, to drive them forward to the enemy. And red ones go faster, as they say. They have this saying, like, red ones go faster. If it's painted red, it'll go faster. And because they all believe it, it's true. There's, yeah, here's their, their symbol. An evil sun, and here are the orc glyphs you can see around it for whatever those mean. Death Skulls, their main color is blue. They like to paint war paint on their faces. So a lot of Death Skulls army, you'll see war paint. White, blue, and um, their, their symbol is a, a horned skull. And their quality that sets them apart from others is that they like to loot other vehicles and other, other things, other gear. So after a battle, if they're fighting with another clan, or even if they're only fighting by themselves, they will rush forward around the battlefield, pick up all the scraps, and paint it blue, and say it was theirs to begin with. I think it's pretty funny. Death skulls are pretty, pretty entertaining. Uh, everything they have is ramshackle and dirty, because, like I said, they're all looted. They don't really care very much for their equipment, but um, they love to have stuff. They're hoarders. Snake bites. Snake bite clan is uh, their their symbol is a snake with these feathers hanging off of it. Their their characteristic that sets them apart from the other clan is that they are very much into the old ancient ways of the orcs. Tradition. They're into tradition. So they don't have a lot of good technology. They used to be able to ride boars into battle, which which is pretty cool. And I'm kind of sad they got rid of that. But um, they're they're not much into technology. They're very tribal. They they have a lot of motifs on them, if, which, if I could find them, are kind of, let's see, I guess I can't really see, find anything, but in, in the Games Workshop snake bite artwork, they have a lot of dags, like these, these uh, teeth patterns, and they've got, uh, they usually have them like wrapped around their arms, so it's, it's very much like uh, tattoos, red and white tattoos. Um, yeah, here we go. So if you look at these these tattoos on this snake bite's arm, a lot of their a lot of their um, artwork and a lot of their figures. I'm sorry, I'm saying um so much. My brain is going so fast. Has a, on their back plates, on their arms, a lot of red and white as the contrasting colors. And here's their banner: a snake, a coiled snake. Finally, my favorite clan is the Blood Axe Clan, and they are known as, well, their symbol, two crossed axes. They don't have an overriding color because they are known as the most humi like of, of the orcs. They incorporate a lot of human or imperium technology or customs. For example, this one, who's been converted up to look like a commissar, commissork, and 
let's see, they, they wear like camouflage, they've sometimes use human human outfits. <clears throat> yeah, camouflage, human kind of style, clothing, hats, great coats. I think it's a it's a hilarious aesthetic for the for the blood axes. The fact that they, they use camouflage because they, they, they think it's it's good for their tactics. Um, this old like German looking officer's cap. What I think is funny is that they will put on just conflicting, not matching camouflage patterns just because they think it's it's camouflage. They'll think it'll it'll keep them keep them hidden and safe and allow them to get in close, even though they could be wearing like urban camouflage on a desert world or lava camouflage in a jungle world, and they'll totally stand out. They, uh, I think that's something that is hilarious about them. One of my favorite art favorite art pieces ever by this artist MG who I, I don't see any of his work anymore so I guess he's not with Games Workshop is this sketch of an orc war boss with his little grot assistant. If that does not make you just so amazed I, I don't know what will. This is the most awesome piece of artwork for a Blood Axe orc I can think of. He's smoking a cigar. He's wearing like a commissar's uniform. He's got the commissar's cap, Blood Axe symbol, Blood Axe banner on his back, carrying a giant axe. And his little Gretchen assistant has a flippin' monocle and a cigarette holder and this little spiky Prussian German hat helmet. So I'm going to end it there because that is, that is awesome. Thanks for watching. Check out Mega Tim Ho's channel. He's a great guy. He, uh, I, I'd love to meet him in real life and share a drink with him and talk about the hobby and stuff. Great channel, great videos to watch. And uh, thanks for watching this Orc Fluff Hunters video. See you in the next one.